everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is B I am a walking actuary and a lifelong learner uh, so this is a second part of my mini series about the actual job market where I feature uh, actuarial job recruiter uh, to come here and talk about the market so in the First episode, uh, we have Derek from uh, DW Simpson, uh, so a recruiting firm from uh, the North America uh, focus. And today, I will have Jane from One Arrow Consulting Group, uh, who specialize in the uh, recruiting uh, for insurance industry and in actual recruitment uh, in the Asia market, especially Southeast Asia. Uh, so I hope you will find uh, this series uh, helpful. And let's welcome Jane. Hi Jane, thanks for being here today. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company, One Arrow Consulting Group? Hi Chị Vi and hi everyone. Uh, this is Jane here. I'm, I'm from One Arrow Consulting uh, and uh, we are an insurance specialist headhunting firm from Hong Kong. Um, we focus on insurance recruitment across Asia. So I'm currently a country manager for One Arrow Consulting Vietnam. Uh, plus that I'm also an actual headhunter with exposure across Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam. Um, and I've been doing it for seven years until now. So I hope today I got to share with you guys um, a little bit about actual markets in Asia and specifically in South Asia where I'm based right now. Yep, thanks, Jen. So how is the job market for the insurance industry in Asia, especially Southeast Asia? Uh, are there any roles that are in high demand and more? Mm, um, in South Asia and specific in um, yeah, in South Asia right now, um, specifically in those countries that I mentioned, um, there are super high uh, demanding on uh, for qualified actually. The reason for us is the insurance industry here, except for Singapore, the rest, we still call it a developing market. And for some even call emerging market, you know, like um, Vietnam or um, Myanmar, or yeah, Laos, Cambodia, we call it emerging market, which means that we are at about uh, 10 to 20 years behind what's happening in developed countries like in the US or in Canada. Um, but of course, going with this is we have a lot of potential for growth. So um, since the markets is always grow faster than the, the manpower, so um, they have a huge demand for expats coming from developed countries and specifically like those te technical role, um, like actuary or risk management is always in high demand. So I think for now, uh, like in Vietnam, there's about 70% of chief actuary for life insurance company is now an expat. So you can see like uh, the, man the local manpower is still catching it up, but still got a huge gap to go through. Um, yeah, and I think that it's about the same number with Thailand as well, which is where, where one of the countries that um, One Arrow Consulting is currently um, we, are, we are working on the market. Uh, but that is only for life insurance. But for non-life, um, I think non-life market is not there yet. Um, yeah, I've been seeing like because the regulation of the general insurance is still pretty easy. So the company doesn't, yeah, doesn't have much demand for qualified workforce. So, um, yeah, to sum up, and then life insurance actually is really, really um, in demand. And outside of actuary, there's also like those, what we call technical role is very in high demand. But for general insurance, not there yet. It means that there's still a lot of room to grow in the future. So that's actually great. Uh, so from your experiences and insights so far, so uh, what do you think uh, the actual job market outlook, like the supply, demand, opportunity, challenges mm. and more? Mm, okay. So um, the good thing about this market is that you come from, if you're coming from a developed country, it's like you got to go, uh, you got to, predicts how it look in 10, 20 years. And you have to you have to you have a chance to make different the change, to make the change in the whole um yeah in like in a life insurance company um in the future. So it's like you see what happened uh, in the developed country and you go back. So you have a huge advantage uh, if you're coming from a more developed country. If you're coming from like US, Canada, you have 10, 20 years ahead. If you're coming from like country like Singapore, Hong Kong, you get about 10 years ahead. So it's like, it's like you, you do see what is going to happen. And if you, if you bring in your experience from a developed country back to an emerging country like us, uh, 
So, um, and imagine that if you have that power to make the chain and set the game back to zero and make the chain that you can't do before. So that was cool thing, isn't it? So that is an opportunity of like um, all the actually um, who is outside and also have a lot of ex a little bit of experience exposure to the country that um, is like what we call developed market. So a um, lot of opportunity to utilize your experience and exposure. Of course, the challenge is still there. One of the biggest one I see is the lack of manpower. Actually, in developed country, um, in actually in developing country like us got to do a lot of work because we are always in a lack of power. So, um, and of course, um, plus is uh, where the capacity is not there yet um, because actually in, um, in those developing country, they are not being like, they're always in a, in, in, in a, in a shorted manpower situation. So that's why they can't really spend their time to work and study at the same time. So the capacity is, still growing, but in a, a lot slower pace than in a developed country. That's what I see. So um, that's why you uh, you got you to gotta be very adapting, able to adapt, um, not just to the new working culture, but also to the new kind of resource. So what we always say in, 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 um, in those insurance company and specifically in actual team is that we work with what we have. Uh, let's see what this, the, the, the resource that we have. We're always in need of like good and new resource coming in um, to solve the problem. But if we don't have, we will what we have. So um, that's one of the opportunity, uh, but a challenge is uh, going, al going along with us. So another opportunity I see is that the non-traditional market, um, actually my job here is not well developed yet. So you don't have a lot of roles that is non-traditional actually. So therefore company will value people with both traditional and non-traditional technical skill as long as business sense. So you are able to bring actually work to different other aspects of the business. Um, and of course, the challenge with that is you will have to be able to influence business to look at those, those new aspects. So I can see that it's, it's an opportunity going along with the challenge. Yeah, so those are going to be like two main things. I can see the biggest um, opportunity going along with the challenges. So yeah, um, apart from that, um, I think language is also one of the, the challenges, big challenges as well. So in those developing country like us, uh, or maybe you are, we're calling also emerging market like us, or even Thailand or Cambodia, Laos, um, the number of people who can speak English is not there yet. So in, in, in a life insurance company, okay, the actual function is yes, people who can be very fluently in English, but outside of the function, the number of people who can speak the language. Um, and if you're coming from a developed country with uh, good um, English uh, and, you, and, and English will be your first language and you can't really speak any other language, then that might be one of, one of the challenges that you have to, because you got to influence the business to look at those new aspects. So, yeah, that might be one of the things that you have to look at before you come in as well. Mm, those are great insights. Yeah, I can see that like where if you yeah. don't speak the same language and it's harder to communicate and if so, then it's harder to like uh, convince someone or sell your idea or especially like I think if, if we come back to uh, emerging markets, we will be in a more senior position. So it's like then we would have to try to make more business decision and be able to exactly. we'll be like, yeah, we'll be like, yeah, better. exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, so that's one of the things I can see. Yeah. Uh, so uh, um, actuary is, um, actual profession is always well known to be like a, a well-paid job. <laughs> so can you share insights on the actual job salary across like maybe different areas, country you, uh, you have the knowledge from? Okay, so uh, disclaimer a little bit that I won't be able to give you guys the exact number but I will be able to do a comparison between um, the living standard and the pay, okay? So you can see that. And, and I would do some like, I would, like, I would say like, do the percentage of where we are um, with the pay rate, okay, of the country. Okay, so um, from four countries that I've been working with, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Actually, actually job in those four countries is all, 
considered at the bad pet shop in also those four countries I've been to. So to be honest, bad pet job. Okay, <laughs> so you can see that like those um, actually um, always be like because it's it's simple. It's always in a high demand. So it's that's why it's yeah it well paid because it's always in high demand. If you don't pay well, that, that actually doesn't work with you. They go for another company. Okay, so um, of course um, the highest is still in Singapore. Because the living cost in Singapore is also really high, so that's why the the pay in Singapore is really high. Uh, but I think um, because in Singapore you have like investment banker and stuff like that, so um, those salary of uh, paid of um, actuary and like investment banker, I would say like about the same, or maybe actually a little bit lower, an investment banker in the country like Singapore. Okay, because Singapore have that. The rest of the country doesn't have that. Okay, so that kind of um, compare with that. But if you look at the country like Vietnam and Thailand, actually always in high demand and insurance company is one of the only industries that always develop within two disease every year for the last 10 years. And uh, even despite the COVID last year, that you see that the war is, is crazy about COVID, but insurance industry is the only industry. Uh, I think one of those very, like one of those uh, three industry in Vietnam that the growth is still like this. Okay, so that's why um, you can see the company developing of this, but the manpower is not there yet. So, and specifically when COVID happened, uh, you can't transfer people from other country coming to the country like Vietnam and Thailand. So they have to push up the people who are locally up and that will put the salary up to the next level. So I can, if I tell you that what happened in the situation, you can imagine that the salary of, um, if you are qualified actually here in Vietnam, you'll be paid very well because there's only the handful of young qualified actually in Vietnam. So if you are qualified actually, um, and if you have the exposure in Vietnam, or if you are even speak the language, for example, you are um, Vietnamese, but working overseas, you will be like, I would say you will be a gem here in Vietnam. Everyone will look for you. Everyone will want you and they will pay you well for that. So, and of course, with the living court in Vietnam and Thailand, actually is having a premium lifestyle. They always have like in, in a top eight in the market. Yeah. And when when you when you do well in actuary and when you actually are qualified actuary then you you have a very premium lifestyle in those emerging countries like this yeah that's why i can tell um you can imagine that like if you want more information about those market and um and uh, one like exact number and stuff like that you can always reach me out on uh, linkedin or email I'll, I'll, I'll send you some salary survey but or maybe you can do some quick research and salary surveys on Vietnam or Thailand, you can see that what how much is actually being paid right now. <laughs> That's interesting about the actuaries comparisons with investment bankers because like uh, investment banker he make a lot but they work way much more than the actuary. So I hope it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> it um in the country like Singapore is uh, yeah it's I think like um actually here not 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 like i think the workload is not there it's not like compared with um investment banker but for um actually they have season so when the season when the peak season on yes you probably will have to work like an investment banker but when it's off season then yeah maybe you're chilling a little bit more <laughs> yeah i i guess like um it's, it's kind of interesting because uh, i got a comment on my youtube channel about from uh, an actuary working in asia and they said like he was so frustrated because he's saying that like the Western actuaries are always break, uh, praise about how good work-life balance we have. <laughs> you make a lot and then maybe you still work, yeah, 40 hours per week, maybe 50s. And then he say like, but it's not like that <laughs> for, for you. Yeah. So, uh, it, but as you say, it's the lack of main power. So when you don't have many people with like specialized knowledge and expertise, yeah. then you don't have the team to support then you, then you actually have to do it. But it's yeah. come with uh, opportunities and learning and stuff. So it's just, uh, I guess, True. whether a person, what they're looking for. 
exactly. Yeah, I always say that like if you are young actually, and um, if you if you want a bigger exposure and like expose to everything, you go for Asia because they have everything lined up for you. You just need people to take like put their hand on it. So uh, if you are young, if you are like still have a lot of energy in you and still want to go for it, the learning cup is there. Like that's why I do see a lot of young actuaries go for Asia country for like two, three years, five years, and actually gain a lot, and then go back to developed country and have the whole full view of like I think like exposure of like um, how an actuary would work, and they can handle all the situation actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel <laughs> older, so <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have a stay here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so so much uh, great information uh, thanks for sharing so far so uh, last but not least do you have any advice for job seekers well i would say i think i think this is one of the sentence i yeah I've, i've been thinking all the way uh, if you like the sun and you can suffer the heat with a little bit of adventure in hearts i think south asia will be an excited journey for you yeah if like all you need in a A little bit of adventure at heart. Um, of course, um, a lot of for information. If you need a lot more information, as I mentioned, you can always reach me out on LinkedIn or via email. I, I um, TV please uh, put on my LinkedIn uh, profile and also my uh, email so that if you guys are in need of any information about South Asia market, specifically in those like Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam, then I would be able to um, either if I know it, I'll share with you, or if I don't know it, I'll, sh- I'll direct you with my consultant who can handle those. So as I mentioned, we are an insurance specialist head hunting firm. So we are across uh, Asia. We have Hong Kong, uh, we're in Singapore, we're in South Asia. So yeah, we'll always have people in um, those countries who can take care of you if you need information. Yeah. Again, thank you so much for being here today and uh, being open and share your knowledge and insight. Yeah. Thanks again, Jane. Thanks, Vivi, for having me in the channel. I hope you find today's discussion interesting and full of uh, great information. Uh, so yeah, if you look for an adventure and uh, you don't mind to try on new things and you want to challenge yourself, maybe uh, going to Asia is a way to go. Uh, and uh, I will have uh, Jane's contact in the comment section. So uh, feel free to reach out to her, um, and I'm sure that she can help you in your um, career development and looking for. The uh, perfect uh, fit. Uh, I wish you another happy productive week ahead, and I will see you in the next week video. Bye now.